The current scenario created by the fear-mongering mainstream media is a perfect environment to get sick in. Inside all day, not exercising, eating crappy preserved food, getting blasted with Wi-Fi devices 24-7, you aren't getting sunlight, vitamin D, which is crucial for immune function and the prevention of illnesses, you aren't producing antioxidants through exercise, and the diet has inadequate nutrients for repairing tissue, and you're under cellular stress from radio wave bombardment. The focus today is vitamin D. You know, don't stay locked up inside. Go out, get some sun, as much sun as possible on as much of your body as possible. But it's not that simple. There are only certain periods of the year and certain times of day where you can get vitamin D. Uh, before we cover that, why is vitamin D so important right now? Specifically, there are many studies demonstrating the effectiveness of vitamin D against influenza and other illnesses. This leads me to believe that the flu might actually be a vitamin deficiency, something I've mentioned in the past. Not only that, our current recommendations are based on a mistake. A statistical error in the estimation of the recommended dietary allowance for vitamin D was recently discovered. In a correct analysis of the data used by the Institute of Medicine, it was found that 8,895 IU per day was needed for 97.5% of individuals to achieve values greater than 50 nanomoles per liter. This could lead to a recommendation of 1,000 IU for children less than one year on enriched formula and 1,500 IU for breastfed children older than six months, 3,000 IU for children greater than one year of age, and around 8,000 IU for young adults and thereafter. Actions are urgently needed to protect the global population from vitamin D deficiency. So uh, actions are urgently needed, yet none of us have heard about this right. This is the type of information the mainstream news keeps from you. It prevents you from understanding how important of a lifestyle component vitamin D is. It is literally a hormone. Vitamin D and sun exposure is just as important as diet and exercise on its own. With all the crucial functions that vitamin D activates, how can we miss it so badly? People genuinely believe that if you get 15 minutes of sun exposure on your hands and face in the middle of winter, that you're good to go. That is not the case. If you think about our past, we would have been outside in the sun all day every day. This equates to dozens of hours of full body tanning every single week in the spring, summer, and fall months. A far cry from what we're doing today. What's even crazier is lubing yourself up with sunscreen like a grease ball before going out in the sun. Most studies about sunscreen and skin cancer show no positive results. And this study even shows a negative outcome. More people get skin cancer when using sunscreen. And our ancestral example here is that the only way to procure food in nature is to be out in the sun through hunting or farming. If you're eating food, Technically, you would have had to be in the sun, and there is certainly a reason that sun worship can be found throughout all of recorded history in many different forms. Architects used to build structures based around letting the sun in. The primary concern is always, Frank, won't I get skin cancer if I'm in the sun all day? Cancer is caused by inflammatory lifestyle factors. Yes, the sun is required to get skin cancer. It is a catalyst, just like driving a car is required for a car accident. but does that mean you're gonna stop driving a car if there's a chance you can get in an accident? No, so why should you stop tanning in the sun? Because it's not necessary? Well, that's what most people believe, but that's a far cry from the truth. As with everything, you have positives and negatives. What positive aspects in your lifestyle prevent skin cancer, and what negative aspects cause skin cancer? So tanning, you know, being in the sun, technically damages your skin, it causes oxidative stress, a trade-off for getting that very important vitamin D. Your body repairs that skin with the positives in your diet, using certain vitamins, proteins, you know, especially vitamins A, B vitamins, vitamin C. If you don't have enough nutrients, your body can heal the skin properly and most people aren't getting enough of those nutrients or they have too many inflammatory lifestyle factors and those negatives are the inflammatory foods in your diet. You know, particularly omega-6 fatty acids from vegetable seed oils and feedlot meats, as well as agrochemicals. 
if the lipids in your cells, you know, all of the cells in your body have fat as a component, and if that's composed of too much omega-6 fats, which is unnatural due to our modern diet, they will be more prone to oxidative stress as omega-6 oxidizes very quickly. If your body is stressed from all of these chemicals, pollutants, negative things in the food and water supply, how are you going to perform the metabolic processes required to heal your skin when you're essentially dying on the inside? You know, there are many anecdotes of people doing much better in the sun on just a simple carnivore diet just by removing those inflammatory factors, not even optimizing nutrients. Oh Frank, isn't this easy for you to say when you're Italian and you don't burn in the sun? Guys, regardless of your skin color, I don't care if you're the palest ginger and you're translucent, that only changes how you have to initially adjust to the sun. There's a drastic difference also in the required amount of tanning you know, between a Northern European versus a Middle Eastern person. Of course, you want maximum skin exposure, ideally naked, uh, at most a small bathing suit or your undergarments. Uh, so you can't just go outside when the sun is out though. Uh, generally speaking, the only months of the year where the UV index is adequate enough to tan is late April through early September. Uh, late May to early August being peak UV, basically the best times to tan. Uh, even today, although you know the UV index was okay, honestly, you know it's a beautiful day, but it's not really worth being outside. You're not getting a lot of vitamin D, you know, for the time you're spending outside compared to other times of the year. So even though today is this beautiful April day. You know, this is an important month for people with the paler skin complexions. You know, since I am Italian, I can go out in the middle of July and I might burn in a day, but you know, my skin will heal very quickly and I'll get that deep, dark olive skin. If you are, you know, on the paler end of the spectrum, again, very important to be outside in April in the earlier months of the year so your skin adjusts using the lower intensity UV rays. Uh, so what actually dictates when we can be outside? It's the amount of UVB in the UVB to UVA ratio of the sun. Uh, from about 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. is when the UV index peaks on a daily basis. That means that the percentage of UVB rays coming from the sun are the highest. UVB equals vitamin D and that peak is around 1 p.m. Uh, so the maximum sun exposure for the day would be about 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Man, it's windy outside. Uh, anything more than that uh, is not really beneficial. Um, I would even argue that there's diminishing returns if you tan more than uh, like two hours per day. Uh, honestly, you know, if you're busy, if you just want to really optimize things, you don't have to be outside for more than two hours. And uh, speaking of wind, uh, you know, can you rub vitamin D off? Can you wash it off? Yes, you can. So. Uh, if you are in the sun for a couple hours uh, and you go inside, don't start, you know, wiping your face, don't take a shower, you know, let it sit, you know, maybe don't even take a shower the whole day, that would be ideal. Let your skin absorb the vitamin D. You know, one of the worst things you can do is like lay in the sun for, you know, four or five hours and then jump in a chlorinated pool. Obviously, your body's still going to get some vitamin D, but, you know, if you spent all that time in the sun, you know, why would you risk, you know, washing some of it off your skin? And I'm assuming it probably takes, you know, a couple hours to absorb uh, after you're out in the sun. Oh my god, this fucking wind. Can you guys even hear me? Holy shit. <laughs> this is ridiculous. It's literally, it's so windy, it's blowing my camera over. I could, I could like wait for it to not be windy and record, but I don't want to be out here all day recording. As I've already gotten my sun today, you know, I've been out from like 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. So, you know, I'm not spending more than two hours outside in April. It's UV index just isn't high enough. Uh, so overall, the concept is pretty simple. Tan from May to August for a couple hours around 1 p.m. You know, the only issue is weather. If it's raining, if it's cloudy, you're generally going to get frustrated. You know, it's kind of funny when you start doing this. You look outside to see how many clouds there are. You know, then when you are tanning and the clouds block the sun, you feel like you're wasting your time. You know, because this is, it's like a game. How much sun exposure can you get at the peak UV? You know, one thing I didn't mention was, you know, parts of the world in relation to your ancestry. Obviously, you know, if you're someone from the UK and you're living in Australia, you know, you're not gonna need as much, you know, sun exposure as an Aboriginal. Uh, you do have to keep in mind, you know, where you're located. You know, I'm an Italian and I'm in New York, so I probably have to get more sun exposure in New York than I would in Italy. Um, a bunch of different things to talk about, but, you know, that overall point remains the same. You know, late spring, late summer, get out in the sun around noon. Uh, that being said, 
Uh, what if you can't get some sun? You know, most of us have nine to five jobs and we can't exactly drop everything to burn our faces off in the sun. Uh, you can supplement vitamin D3. I do have one available on organsupplements.com. Although dosing is difficult to gauge uh, and it's metabolized differently than the sun, uh, you definitely don't feel as good you know, from a supplement as you do laying outside. Uh, I usually do go to tanning beds a few times a month in the off season uh, to keep a healthy glow. And those tanning beds really do make me feel good. Although that is arguably detrimental because of the electric and magnetic field exposures from the tanning bed. Uh, the length of time in a tanning session uh, really does depend on the skin color and the time of year as we've gone over. Uh, I did mention that you know most people should start tanning in early April uh, so your skin can start to darken. Uh, and then by July, you'll have the tan skin uh, so that you won't burn in the, the hotter sun, the higher UV indexes. Uh, you know, it's, again, not a good idea to go outside in the blistering August sun after not being out all year. And a lot of people do that when they go on vacation and that's why they end up burnt and that's why they think they need to use all this sunscreen and that they don't tan naturally. So if you're on a standard American diet or a really poor diet, you know, do you have to like adjust for a few months and fix your diet for a few months before uh, you can get some sun? No. Uh, all you really need to do is just start consuming quality animal foods and optimize your omega-3 to omega-6 ratio and you'll be good to go, you'll be fine. Uh, the next step is determining if your D3 levels are adequate. Uh, maybe I should ask my neighbors. Uh, generally, one season of tanning uh, plus a supplement will fix a deficiency in most people. You know, about 5% of my clients have had adequate vitamin D levels just, you know, by going out in the sun, going on vacation, and supplementing. Uh, I would say about 5,000 IU vitamin D is a good starting maintenance dose. Uh, you can go a lot higher, and I mean like, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 IU per day, but there is a problem with nutrient synergy as, you know, vitamin D requires magnesium, vitamin K2, and vitamin A to be metabolized. It's antagonistic to those nutrients and it will deplete them. Uh, it can also overactivate calcium. So if you have a lot of calcium stores in your body, you know, from a past fortified diet, you might run into hypercalcemia issues initially when using too much vitamin D. Uh, most people do have enough vitamin A, uh, but they aren't getting enough magnesium or K2. Uh, that being said, I personally take you know 200 milligrams of magnesium glyconate. Um, I think the magnesium is something you might only need to use initially in larger amounts, and then you can kind of get it from food. Uh, I do take two milligrams of vitamin K2 MK4 per day because you know most of our guts are not in a good state to produce it, and it's very very difficult to get from food. And even though I'm out in the sun all the time, I still supplement vitamin D. Uh, I found that vitamin D accelerates the tanning process. So, you know, when I was going to tanning salons and I wasn't taking vitamin D, it would take me a few weeks to build up a base tan. But when I supplement vitamin D, something about supplementing it, it just activates the skin receptors more and I tan in a matter of days. Uh, but can we get vitamin D from food? Now, if you're eating, you know, one to two pounds of fatty fish per day, that would be a few thousand IU and there really is no significant food source for vitamin D besides those fatty fish like mackerel and herring. And most people aren't gonna do that because those foods are, are frankly pretty gross. Uh, so we kind of rule out the food sources of vitamin D. Uh, you know, the purpose of the diet in regards to vitamin D is to get the nutrients that allow you to metabolize it from the sun. You know, the cholesterol, the magnesium, you know, a bunch of other cofactors your body needs to utilize vitamin D. Don't look at the diet for all your nutrients. You know, you have to get vitamin D from the sun. Adequate blood levels of vitamin D can be gauged by a blood test. You know, that's the only real way to know for sure where you're at. You know, that being said, our ancestors weren't, you know, testing their blood for vitamin D. Uh, the only problem is that if you're supplementing vitamin D, uh, your serum levels will be artificially high. So you want to take like a month or two break from the supplement before getting your blood levels tested. Uh, for nanograms per milliliter, uh, which is the measurement used in the United States, you want around 60 uh, NG slash ML. Uh, for nanomoles per liter, which is used in most other countries, you want around 150 nanomoles per liter, uh, NMOL slash L. And that measurement is 2.5 times the nanograms measurement. So that's a, that's a pretty easy conversion. You know, if you're in the United States, 
uh, multiply it by 2.5 that will be the number you see in uh, other countries in regards to cyclical nature of vitamin d you know our stores would be depleted over the winter and then when the spring and summer months come back around that's where we get our nutrients that's why humans are meant to you know get pregnant in the fall where you know we just ate all these quality animal foods over the summer we got plenty of sunlight and the nutrition is high you get pregnant because the fertility of the sperm and the egg is very high and then you know the pregnancy goes through the colder months of the year and then when the baby is born uh the sun's out again you know in june july the sun's out and if you look at children born in those summer months they're taller they're more intelligent they're just better off in general because of the vitamin D specifically. Uh, that's gonna be it for today. This was kind of like a, a brief overview of some vitamin D3 information I've gone over in the past. And uh, maybe, maybe we'll do like some really in-depth vitamin D stuff in the future. But uh, the point is, you know, get outside, get a lot of sun exposure, you know, feel good, get healthy. It is a major lifestyle factor. Uh, if you guys uh, wanna support me, uh, you can check out all the stuff down in the description below. As I mentioned, you know, I do have some of these vitamins on organsupplements.com. Of course, you know, like the video, share the channel, uh, leave me a comment down below uh, so Frankie Boy has something to look at later. Uh, but thank you again for joining me, guys, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.